Yeah, don't get to see this side of the loft too often. Uh, this is the side where our heat presses and everything are, are we do with sublimation, HTV and that. But I also have one of my 3D printers over here. It's just off to my left. What we're going to talk about and that is the Bamboo Labs X-Carbon. And we're going to talk about why I like it. And I've had it for about a year and it was, was not given to me. I bought this and it was not cheap. But I also put the uh, AMS unit on the top, to, which holds four spools and does auto transfer and all kinds of neat stuff like that. And I really like it. It wasn't cheap either. But this has uh, been an absolutely trouble-free unit. Um, it's getting ready to run a job on it right now. It has run, I can't say 24-7 uh, because I don't always do that with my printers. But it does run many, many, many hours a week uh, as we run parts through it. And I've, yes, there's been a whole bunch of videos right here close together about 3D printers, but it's blazing hot outside. I'm up in the loft where it's air conditioned. I have a list of things I needed to do videos about, and one of the people had asked, you know, well, you had that uh, X1 carbon for all. What do you think of it? Well, I'm going to tell you what I think about it, I'll show you a few things here. So I'm going to start off here uh, talking about the build plates. It comes with this uh, cool plate and then it comes with the engineering plate on the other side. It's uh, the engineering plates for PETG, ABS, TPU, PA, and PC and the cool plate is for PLA. Uh, I used it for a few jobs. In fact, I didn't even clean it off after the last one because the stuff really sticks to it. That You know, stuff's going to stick. Uh, that, that wasn't a problem. Uh, but I prefer a PEI plate and that's what I have in there and it's the Bamboo Labs PEI plate not aftermarket so it has the correct little thing it reads in there or slots I don't know it reads something so that's just about the uh, the build plate now I'll get you over here close on the printer yeah, one minor little annoyance uh, that this has is it gets little particles of uh, whatever filament you're using and it kind of scatters them around the bottom I've got a little uh, bitty vac I just vac them out with and I know some people have 3D printed trays and little clean out scoops and all kinds of things. I don't go to that much trouble. It's just that uh, you know, it's a little bit of a nuisance. You've got to clean that up down there every once in a while. This is the AMS unit that sits on top and uh, right now I'm running a job off that number three there, that uh, spool of black that there's not a whole lot left on. And when that runs out on this job, it'll flip over to the very first one that I have just loaded with a new spool of black and it'll pick up and you'll you'll never know where it started and stopped. It's just uh, absolutely flawless. I do run this with the door open when I'm printing PLA, especially as warm as it is up here this time of year. Uh, in the winter time when we don't have it uh, quite so warm up here, I will run it with the door closed with PLA to retain the heat on the bed. Because we don't keep it very warm up here in the winter time. Unless I'm doing a lot of work up here and then I'll turn it up. In which case I would pop the door open. Uh, I do the same thing with my uh, Kitty Galaxy uh, Core XY printer. I leave the top off of that so that it gets enough airflow and doesn't overheat in there. And yes, it makes what they call poop. Little bits of filament that get spit out the back after it does its nozzle cleaning and so on. And uh, yeah, I could use a cardboard box, but I got a 3D printer. Why not 3D print a box for it? It just comes out that little chute in the back. And I, I dumped this here, oh, probably last week, two weeks ago. I was gone last week. But it doesn't take, uh, it takes a long time to fill it up. Another little thing I like about this uh, printer is uh, Bamboo Labs actually has like a, a filament club, for lack of a better word, you can join. And you can buy, if you join and you pay so much, you can buy so many spools that uh, it's cheap. And it's good quality filament. Never have any problems with it, it's consistent in size. And we buy most of our, well, all the filament for this, it comes from there now. And not, one of the nice things they have are these spools that uh, have an RFID tag inside, with, if you're using their filament. And it'll automatically tell the uh, AMS what color the filament is. And it's pretty handy. And these are refillable, so you could buy the refills instead of having to buy the whole spool every time. And that also keeps a lot of plastic and stuff out of the landfill. Uh, now one thing you cannot use on that AMS if you're using a, another brand filament are cardboard spools. And the reason is, as those spools rotate back and forth, they create uh, a cardboard dust, I guess you would call it, and it, would ju it just follows things up in there. So 
that and it eventually changes the diameter of the spool so that everything's different so that's the uh, reason they don't want you to use the cardboard spools in there plastic spools are fine uh, this is a different brand one here I don't know what brand that one is that uh, I just took out a little bit ago because I need to print something in uh, this fluorescent green it didn't have any in the bamboo color so I had to use this but that uh, as long as the plastic spool works fine uh, so I don't don't like about it is it's loud. I mentioned there I had to keep the door open when it, and you need to do that when you have the AMS unit on. Unless you build something up here to vent it, then there are things on Thingiverse and different places you can download and print a little riser thing to let air flow through, and with a little vent you can close in case you're doing ABS or something. I just leave the door open a little bit, and it works just fine. Winter time, cold as I mentioned earlier, I just close the door and when it's only like 60 up here. Your ambient temperature makes a big difference when you're 3D printing, especially on an open unit like, uh, well, the Ender V2 from Creality. If your uh, prints are not sticking and you just like tried everything and you crank the bed temperature up and what's your ambient temperature? If you're trying to print someplace where it's 50, that bed's not going to be able to keep up and stay hot enough. So there's something, a uh, little tip there. So anything else I don't like about it? No. Uh, I absolutely love this thing. I know people have complained, they said, well, it's got a camera in it, and the camera can see everything. Well, you know, somebody from China could look at you through that camera, and well, for starters, I don't walk around inside my 3D printer naked. I don't walk around in there too often at all, really. Uh, unless you got your head stuck in there, all they're gonna see is a print surface. It's not like it can pan around and look out the door and see what else is going on. So to me, that's just, nah, I don't care. Well, they say, well, you know, they can steal your designs. Well, you don't have to be in China to steal somebody's designs. People do that all the time. We've got our designs stolen right off of uh, our website. Somebody just copies it. It happens. So that's a moot point for me, too. Oh, well, anything else about it? Uh, it's literally my favorite printer, and as we start to uh, replace some of the other ones, and I've got 16 of them, and I'm going to start replacing. I'll be going all with Core XY printers, and there's going to be at least one more of these X1 Carbons because it's uh, just a fantastic printer. Trouble free, very, maintenance is very easy. About the only thing you really need to do is to grease the rods, and it'll tell you when to do it, and it'll show you how to do it. Pretty easy. Uh, I mentioned one other misconception a lot of people have is that well you have to be connected to the internet to use this. No you don't. That There's a micro SD card slot on there and you can run projects from that micro SD card just like you can on like a Crowley or a King Rune or a, a Tivo Tarantula or one of the longer printers. Uh, you do not have to be connected to the internet. It's handy if you are and um, I actually have this one connected to our Wi-Fi so I can monitor it on my phone from from in the house or something I can look at it and see where the progress is and see if the project's done or not because then when the project's done I can come out and take it out uh, that doesn't mean that I'm going to run it remotely no I want to be here when it starts it does have a lot of detection on it if, if your first layer is all funky it will stop and it will send you a message that hey you know this messed up you better come look at it then you have your choice of cleaning that up and starting over or said, eh, it's not that bad, just let it go. So that's another nice little feature about it. So again, this is not sponsored. I bought this, but uh, going on a little bit of a rant here about how much I like this printer because it's trouble free and I like things that are trouble free. And I'll put a link in the description to uh, Bamboo Lab site if you want to go buy one. I don't make anything off of it because I'm not sponsored by them or anything. But if you want one of these, uh, good printer. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Needed to do at least a urine use review on this. Thanks for watching. Roger in the loft above the shop. See you in the next one.